Following the attack on the United States on 9-11, the U.S. government restructured its handling of investigating and managing immigration and related activity around the world. It created ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. ICE now has more than 20,000 law enforcement and support personnel in more than 400 offices in the United States and around the world. In 2019, a camera crew was offered access to follow and document what the men and women of ICE do on a daily basis. Every year, ICE removes thousands of immigrants from the United States, the majority for committing crimes. We're not gonna focus on the person that jaywalked down the street. We're talking egregious crimes, murder, sex offenses, child molestation. The vehicle just pulled up in front of our target house. How you doing? But the activities of ICE and its enforcement and removal operations is not without controversy. Hi, officer. I go and I go hunting for these ICE agents over here. We see ICE as an assault on the very character and history of the United States. Twice, melt the ice. A lot of people want to make it out that ICE ERO specifically wants to target everybody in the country. They wouldn't come on our radar if they were here just for a better, better life. These are the men and women of ICE and the work they do 365 days a year. Are you going to comply this time? No. You're not going to comply? No. The human stories behind the headlines. <laughs> and their core mission to enforce America's immigration laws. Beyond Borders, Inside American Immigration. Showtime. This time on Beyond Borders. A Guatemalan illegal immigrant with convictions for DUI and domestic violence is tracked down to the streets of Newark. Polish national who previously agreed to leave the United States in 2011 is arrested by immigration officers after driving under the influence, or DUI. A Honduran criminal who was released back into his own community after serving time in prison for sexual assault is picked up in Philadelphia. Indian man who overstayed his holiday visa faces deportation after living in the United States for 20 years. A registered sex offender from El Salvador is tracked down to his place of work in Newark. New arrivals are processed at the Otay Mesa detention facility near San Diego while they wait for their chance to see an immigration judge. It's 5 a.m. in New Jersey, and ICE officer Ken is on his way to the first case of the day. Go off to uh, the city of Orange in New Jersey. It's an urban city, so you have a lot of drugs, uh, possession and distribution of uh, narcotics. You know, you have your aggravated assault, you have your domestic violence cases, you have your DUIs. You know, there are homicide cases, there are robberies and uh, burglaries. It's similar to the majority of the cases across the state. We have a couple of targets that we're looking to arrest today, and uh, the first one we're heading to is a Guatemalan national that had entered the country illegally, has multiple DUI convictions, has some domestic violence issues. We're uh, looking to grab him first. Hopefully our intel is correct that he leaves early in the morning. You don't roll up blind on these situations, especially when you have someone that has a criminal background like that. So the officers will investigate it. You know, they'll follow up with it, uh, check out some leads, do surveillance, try and get them outside of the residence for the element of surprise and also officer safety issue that way. But like I said, we go into the residences. If we have to, it's not an issue. We're trained and we do it numerous times. In Philadelphia, ICE officer Ryan is on his way to the home address of a Honduran sex offender who was recently paroled from prison. This guy was arrested by the Philadelphia Police Department. That's what alerted us that he was here in this country. He had contact with law enforcement that resulted in an arrest where he was booked into their custody. Um, he went through his 
criminal proceedings. He was found guilty by a judge, and the judge actually sentenced him to to a period of incarceration where he, you know, he, he actually served some time. We sent the detainer up to Philadelphia prison system and, and unfortunately, again, they refused to honor it. And they, re you know, unfortunately, they released this guy back into his community. And uh, he has no, no legal status here in the United States. People don't typically want people that have been, you know, arrested and convicted and served prison sentences living on their block. The plan is, is that, you know, hopefully somebody can see him coming out of the house. Somebody can positively identify him from, from the arrest photo. And, uh, and we can grab him before he gets into a car, but far enough away from the house that he can't run back into the house. The Otay Mesa Detention Center in San Diego is located less than a mile from the Mexican border. The Otay Mesa Detention Facility is an ICE detention center for detainees at multiple stages of the immigration process, all the way from their initial appearance with a, an, an asylum officer, all the way through their complete hearings with an immigration judge, and even after they've been ordered removed th throughout the appeal process. So the facility is about a quarter mile long from one end to the other. It's a, a new concept in detention. It's a free-flowing environment. Detainees are able to walk freely without handcuffs or escorts all the way from one end to the other or wherever they need to go. There's just a free-flowing movement for them. We have detainees at different classification levels. The blue jumpsuits are for low-level detainees with no criminal record or just asylum seekers. We also have those that are in orange, which is a low medium or a medium high. We also have detainees that are wearing red, which is for high-level detainees. Everyone's got a story to tell. And we're here to make sure that they're treated in a fair, humane way and make it through the legal process that the government has provided. The individuals will go through the intake process, which they have 12 hours to complete this whole process here in this area. Once they get to their housing unit, then they're gonna be scheduled for an interview with an asylum officer if they've claimed fear. If they have a positive determination of fear, what will then happen is they'll get referred to the immigration judge for a full hearing, where they'll go through that process. If they get a negative determination of fear, then they will have the opportunity to request a review by an immigration judge and have that review done. And if they lose that one, then they'll be removed. In Philadelphia, a Polish national who has been living illegally in the United States for 20 years faces deportation back to his home country. I'm from Poland and the city is Lublin. It's on the um, southeast of Poland. I just uh, take the visa and just come to America. It was December 2003. They give me the 10 years visa. I start to live in Polish area in one room with my wife. We come without the money. Just start uh, the life in here. After half a year, we take apartment. After two years, we bought the house. I did completely remodel this house, we move in and live there. I take the job, uh, I made the small company and I was working like a subcontractor for a pretty big company in New Jersey. They sponsored me because I'm good in my job. I start already to try to be legal in America and I actually uh, step by step uh, take the form 1140 or something like that. This is the last step before the green card. But the law in US, nobody can take it, the green card, nobody. They make it before something like 10 years amnesty or uh, through the work, you can stay in America. Now it's nothing. Because of situation in Poland, somebody making trouble. And I didn't know about it and uh, they make the red notice for me. Because of this red notice, I signed the voluntary departure from US. We encountered him in 2011. Uh, at that point, there was a warrant for his arrest in Poland. So he was arrested and placed in ICE custody and deportation proceedings. He was released on bond from the immigration judge. And eventually he was granted voluntary departure, which means that he was to leave the country on his own. Uh, within a certain period of time. 
Uh, it doesn't look like he's done that. He's still here in the United States. He says he hasn't left. So when he didn't depart within the required amount of time, that voluntary departure order became a final order of removal. Today, they hold me on the street, take my fingerprints, and the fingerprints are coming to here. I go work, the guys are coming and harass me. Done. Back in New Jersey, ICE Officer Ken is quietly getting into position across the street from the house of the Guatemalan National. There's a blue van, if you can see right here in this driveway here. You see it on the end, right there? That's his van, supposedly. So Guatemalan National, uh, that has uh, conviction for DUI, simple assault, domestic violence, disorderly conduct. He actually um, was placed in removal proceedings before, had time in front of the judge, and the judge ordered him removed. So he has a warrant of removal right now. Between 6, 6.30, gets picked up to go to work. So we're going to try to um, pick him up as he's coming out of the house and if he gets in the vehicle. That's what we're doing right now. I have uh, right now three separate teams within a uh, five mile radius on three separate targets. So um, there is urgency to affect the arrest on these subjects that are public safety threats right now in this neighborhood. Um, I'm trying to monitor some traffic uh, with a couple of the uh, teams right now. And you know, uh, this one was set up on, was supposed to have this guy in eyesight within a half hour or so. One of the other teams is checking on an address. They believe the subject to be in and there's some movement in the building, the lights coming on to that effect. So it's uh, getting a little hectic, but I'll monitor the situation and we're in close proximity of each other. So if uh, assistance is needed, we can move to either one of those spots. In Philadelphia, ICE officer Ryan arrives at the target house, but the inner city location creates additional challenges for the team. We have a block that has both the front and the back. As you can see, people park in the front and the back. We don't have a, a vehicle that this guy's using. So we have to have people cover both, both the front entrance and the back entrance. It's dark, it's not easy to identify people, you know, when and it kind of spreads you thin where, you know, we only have so many people, we can't, um, it's difficult to cover both the front and the back of a house. Elsewhere in the city, an Indian national who first arrived in the United States on a tourist visa 20 years ago has been detained by ICE officers. to study, but uh, couldn't get aid from the government because I came on a tourist visa. So I started working since then. I want to get papers, so that was my dream from the day one. Build a good life over here. I used to work at a Columbus Boulevard gas station and they, the owners, file charges on me that I stole money from them. We had new skill machines, the gambling machines at the gas station. This one night, this cab driver, 666, the white car, he hit $500. I managed to cash that out. Then he hit $300. I told him, come give me a couple hours so I can make some sales so I can pay you. He said, okay. He went back to the machine. He hit again $500. Oh, he says, I need my money right now. I said, sir, I don't have. I even opened the register and showed it to him that I don't have no cash. He used the MF word and he says that I'm gonna shoot you. I said, like, look, give me a couple of hours. He understood, he left. I went behind the machine. There's the money inserter in there. I took that out, took the money out, make sure that the $800 are on, on the side for him. The cops came, I'm standing right over there with my daughter. They saw the camera, they saw everything. I told him that see what I have done. 
that the guy was over there. I paid him. I didn't put the money in my pocket. They still filed the charges. I just came out of the house, getting into the car, going to the court. And she saw them getting me arrested. So she just got upset. She says she's fine. So far, so good. So last year, I got robbed and I got beat. Eight of my vessels in small memory were busted. I'm still hurting right now due to all of this. I don't want to mess with nobody. I just want to work and just take care of my daughter. That's it. Go home. And now I'm worried. I don't know what's going to happen. In New Jersey, lights have just come on in the house ICE officer Ken is watching with his team. It sounded like a vehicle started, I can't tell. All right, I'm watching for the lights. Uh, the blue van is on, the lights are on. He started the blue van, this guy. Blue van is moving. You have other individuals leaving the basement too. There's at least three of them here. All right, down four. Pleasant, move around the front. Now we're coming. Pleasant, move to the front. Officers need to stop the vehicle before it gets to the nearby freeway, where they could lose the suspect in the morning rush hour traffic. Tell me to pull to the front of the vehicle. I'm going to get in front of it, and then you can pull it over. The vehicle stops and is quickly surrounded by ICE officers. What is your name, senor? That's the target. With the identity of the target confirmed, the officers now need to clear the road to avoid a traffic jam occurring. Where are his keys? I'll pull this van over. Some other agente de immigration. Tienen un orden de arresto para usted. They're gonna take me. Sí. Okay. okay. Donde está la llave para él? Yeah, don't let, uh, let me just move my car. The suspect is handcuffed and searched. He is led away by ICE officers and securely placed in the rear passenger seat of a waiting car. Meanwhile, ICE officer Ken parks the suspect's van further down the street. Yeah. Thank you very much. See you there. Thank you. Good job, guys. Well, the intel that we had was uh, basically on point, spot on. So the uh, subject uh, leaves between 6.30 and 7, gets in a, a blue um, a van and, uh, you know, heads out down the block. And, you know, we, we sat there, we watched the basement apartment lights go on around 6.30, 6.35. Subject come out of the basement apartment, get in the blue van, pull out. And, uh, you know, the team executed a vehicle stop on the subject. 
pulled him over. It was the target, and uh, you know, it went cut and dry. It was, uh, you know, outstanding work by the the guys, and uh, he already has a final order of removal, so he is going to be detained basically till we uh, remove him from the United States. In Philadelphia, a Hispanic male fitting the target's description has left the building. The team are on high alert. This guy is breaking out a mattress, an old mattress, and it looks like it may be our target, too. He's got the gift where he can ID people. <clears throat> so, so we just got a call on the radio that somebody said they think it's him coming out of the house right now. I don't want to turn up. Yeah, I think it's definitely him. You want to jump on him? Yeah, let's go. That's him right there. Police, yeah. don't move. Don't move. You got it? Put your hand on the wall. What's your name? Jose. Yeah. Okay, we have the order and put her in the way. Okay. He just was coming out of his house, putting out some trash. That's the guy we're looking for. That's the guy that was released from the city of Philadelphia after serving time and us putting a detainer on him. We had to come out here with all these people to arrest him here rather than the city turning him over to us. ICE officers take the suspect to a nearby car and place him securely in the rear passenger seat. Hold on. Senor, es, es posible yo ponga en la frente? Un momentito. Tienen problemas de salud? That's it. I mean, I've, I've done enough, right? Today. Couldn't have gone any better. Happy that everyone got out of there without a problem and that, that you know, no one ran, no one was in any danger or anything like that. We were able to identify him from his past arrest photos and uh, you know they they called it out that it was him so I wound up being the first one there most people tend to listen to the police and and, and don't want to really put up a fight there are those people that, that want to when they see you know a police officer coming towards them or, or you know a, a federal officer coming towards them that their first instinct it is to run but I think most people comply It's another day in New Jersey, and ICE Officer Ken is on his way to the last known address of the first suspect. Right now it's 8 o'clock. Um, our next target lives in the city of Patterson. It's a, another densely populated area in, say, County, Northeast New Jersey. Um, this subject is an El Salvadorian national that has three convictions for DUI and is also a registered sex offender under Megan's law for a sexual assault against a minor. He has a green card, but because of the fact that he has a serious felony conviction involving a sex offense against a child, he has violated the Immigration Nationality Act, and it's up to a judge to decide whether or not he can remain in the United States. So we're going to arrest him and uh, place him in removal proceedings, and the judge will determine whether or not he can remain in the United States. This gentleman does not drive. He's either going to walk or take public transportation, and due to the, the cold weather today, we're pretty sure he's going to try and take public transportation. So we're figuring he's going to leave the house around 9, 9.30 to get to his job, which starts at 10 o'clock. We're going to set up on the residence, and we're going to make sure we make the arrest as he comes out of the residence before he gets to the actual bus stop or whatever type of public transportation he's going to be taking this morning. But we will definitely not wait till he gets to 
the area that's going to be crowded with other people waiting for public transportation. We know where his job is, so by any chance if he stayed somewhere else tonight or and he went to work without us seeing him leave the residence, we'll then head to the employment to try and execute the arrest there. We do know where the employment is. It's not far from his residence, about a couple of miles away. We've had two on the house the entire morning so far, so we'll have a total of four officers up there to execute this arrest. Back in Philadelphia, the Indian national who has been living illegally in the United States for 20 years is waiting to hear what will happen to him next. How you doing? You ready? We're gonna go over some paperwork real quick, okay? And then... Right over here. Right here. You have been admitted into the United States, but are removable for the following reasons stated below. You are not a citizen or a national of the United States. You are a native of India and a citizen of India. You were admitted to the United States at Los Angeles, California on or about August 10th, 1999 as a non-immigrant B2 visitor for pleasure with authorization to remain in the United States for a temporary period not to exceed February 9th, 2000. You remained in the United States beyond February 9th, 2000 without authorization from the Department of Homeland Security. On the basis of the foregoing, it is charged that you are subject to removal from the United States pursuant to the following provisions of law, Section 237A1B of the Immigration Nationality Act. It's an administrative charge, which you have to see a judge for, okay? You understand that part? Yep. Okay. I'll just take these paperwork to my lawyer and whatever she wants to do, I don't know. This doesn't mean anything as far as you being removed from the United States. All this means is you're being served with the paperwork, okay? The judge is responsible for doing that, okay? Not us, all right? Just to show you, you don't have to sign this. This is an arrest warrant for you from the Department of Homeland Security, okay? It was determined that there was probable cause to believe that you is removal from the United States to the determination based upon the execution of a charging documents to initial removal proceedings against the subject. You'd be able to fight your case at home through the courts. Do you understand that? Okay. You're released and contingent upon your enrollment and successful participation in the alternatives to detention. ATD program as designated by the Department of Homeland Security, electronic monitoring is a requirement and a curfew must be imposed. Failure to comply with the conditions of the release or the requirements of the ATD program may result in redetermination of your release conditions or your arrest. So any violation that you do here can also be brought back in to redetermine if you need to be brought in back into custody or not. Okay? Do you have a passport? Indian passport, yes. Where is that at? The house. At the house. Okay. Eventually, when you go over to ISEP and you get enrolled into um, their program after we release you, you're going to have to surrender your passport. That's part of the rules of this program that you're being released today. Okay. 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 Signature here. Okay. Do you have any questions? All right. I'm going to make some copies of these documents for you so you have that you can provide your lawyer with. Um, they're going to take you over to ISAP, which is only a few blocks away. They're going to roll you into the program, which is the ATD and ISAP program. The detainee now knows that he will be allowed to return home to his daughter while his case is processed. But serious doubts still remain about his future in the United States. At the Otay Mesa Detention Center near San Diego, new arrivals are being prepared for processing into the secure facility. So right now what we have going on is we have multiple detainees being brought in by the Border Patrol, and they're going through their property and their shoes to make sure that they don't have any contraband, and they're cataloging all of their property at this point. Um, once they go through here, they're gonna go in for the whole intake process here inside the facility. 
So when they got dropped off outside, one of our officers, as well as medical, screened them to ensure that there's no uh, contagious diseases and that they are who they said they were and we have their files all the property. The majority of these people are asylum seekers looking for either a better life or economic asylum or they're actually searching for, asking for political asylum. Um, a lot of, we have a large population coming from Cameroon. Uh, a lot of them are, are fleeing actual persecution. So uh, as far as the actual threat, it is minimal. However, we have found those with criminal records in with these same people coming across the border. So there is a legitimate threat out there. 12 hours is the guideline set by the 2011 performance-based national detention standards. So we have 12 hours to complete the intake process and get them medically screened, categorized, and housed appropriately, according to their classification level. That's our cartoon? Mm-hmm. Taz, Tasmania Devil. Yeah. I collect you all the, the you remember yeah. the year it is all the okay. tasks? Yeah. And Guatemala. Guatemala. We are a nation of laws and then you need to follow the rules. And they're coming across and it's just the process they have to go through. In Philadelphia, time has run out for the Polish man who was arrested on DUI offenses by the city police. He asked to, you know, for the opportunity to leave the country on his own. The judge granted him that. However, part of that order is that if you don't leave the country in the time that is allotted to you, it becomes a final order of removal. So now it's our job to try to effect that removal and, and, and return him to his country. You know, I'm the man, but my wife, it's almost want to talk to me about the suicide, you know, because the life finishes. I don't know where can I go, what can I do, and I'm working all the time. I'm working Sundays, I work in holidays, I'm working uh, sometimes two, three hours from this uh, where I'm, I'm living. Twice the, um, I make mistake when I'm driving, the officer hold me, done. My wife don't do any mistake, no with the driving, no nothing, they don't arrest her and they don't arrest me in the house. They arrest me on the street uh, when I'm, uh, I was on the way to the, to the work. He was recently arrested for DUI. Uh, that's how we encountered him today. And uh, we're, we're going to remove him from the country. We're also gonna to check to make sure that the, the warrant from Poland has been cleared. So he's gonna go into ICE custody and to one of our local uh, detention centers. Uh, we'll, we'll try to get a travel document from the Polish government. And once we do that, we'll make arrangements for him to, to re be returned to Poland. That might take a couple of weeks. I know this is the law, yeah, done. I don't understand why it's impossible just to stay in America. You know, if you can make it any probation, do something like that, check how you live, what you did. I never take any one dollar from America. I always only pay for everything what the country wants from me. Then it's why I think I'm better American than many other Americans. I already bought two houses here. I pay the taxes. I have the legal company. I'm working really good. I don't bother at anybody. I don't do anything wrong. Why I can't live here? Why? But you know, law is the law. I don't know how. how, how. Well, they're going to spin the truth. To, they're going to tell the story the way they, they see it. We're going to tell the story the way we see it. We have the laws for a reason. Uh, we put time into the immigration court for them to go through the process, and we just can't then ignore the decisions of the court at the end of the day. We prioritize the criminals, but we also have a responsibility to, to enforce all of the laws of this country. If he hadn't been arrested for the, for the criminal charge here in the U.S., we probably wouldn't have encountered him. In New Jersey, ICE Officer Ken is in position and observing the house the suspect is believed to be staying at. We have vehicles going in and out of the driveway next to the target residence, and we have people that are coming in and out also. And there was a gentleman that might have met the, um, 
description and facial look of the subject. We had a couple officers go talk to him as he made, walked away and turned the corner, but it wasn't our target. So we're still on track. He should be coming out hopefully within 15 to 20 minutes to head to, to work. So even though everything is moving around, uh, we're still in place waiting for our subject. In Philadelphia, the Indian man who overstayed his holiday visa by 20 years has been offered a place on the ATD program while his case is being processed through the legal system. What happened was we served him his court paperwork, so he's got to see an immigration judge before the violations that he, he overstayed his visa. We aren't responsible for the actual order and the person removed. He, the judge is responsible for that, so he got an administrative charge by us to see an immigration judge for violating his overstay order. He's going to have his day in court just like any other thing. If he was criminally arrested, he would have his day in court with, him, with the judge. Because he has a child custody issue, meaning that he's responsible for a child and the mother is not in the picture, we have what's called an ATD program, alternatives to detention. So we put a GPS on him to track his movements. So he's responsible to report here and there and he'll have regular scheduled house visits to make sure everything in the home is okay and there's no issues there and then he'll have regular scheduled office visits. There's not really a lot of room in custody, so having him in custody is gonna create a big problem with the child. When people have issues like this, this is just another program to help facilitate that. I mean, we're all human. Even people in immigration uh, that work for ICE here, we all have families, so we're not heartless. We understand that he's got a child custody issue. And he, I mean, he's, he was very emotional. I mean, you could see when he was signing his court paperwork, he was nervous to sign his signature, so. I was trying to let him know it's okay, you know, you're going to be able to go home and fight your, your case at home with, and, you know, with your lawyers and, and be with your kid. Here's your court paperwork, work, okay? Thanks. All right, good luck. Jersey, ICE officers can see movement outside the target's house. That truck parked in front of you, there's a guy in there, he's, uh, he's asleep in the driver's seat. Well, people are locked up there. Let me see what these guys are doing and I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. All right, let me know. We've had an individual back and forth, um, different than the one subject that came out that we ID'd that wasn't him. We didn't figure it was him, but we wanted to double check. We have one individual that pulled up with a truck in the backyard that went in front of the house. Um, it sort of looked like him, but we weren't 100% sure, and we don't believe it is, but um, he just pulled out, and we just determined that... All right, it, maybe uh, I'll just... Uh, it comes back to... Real quick and just say, comes back to a subject for, that might be a relative of him because it has the same sure. last name. Uh, so we have an officer dispatched to pull that vehicle over to ID that subject. Ice officer Ken maintains watch on the house and waits for an update from the officers who are tailing the truck. He's walking into the Dunkin' Donuts right now. It's hard to kind of it looks like him, but I don't know if it's the same guy. He's got a hat on. He might be a brother. Yeah, that's that's what we're thinking. I, I have LEC run that name from CIS. This guy's got status like the target. With his team now split across two locations, ICE Officer Ken must keep a tight control of the situation. Yeah, let's find out. Yeah, stand by. Yeah. I'm waiting for him to come out before I, uh, I do anything. So, I think this is his brother or relative, you know, he's, uh, out here. He's got a conviction for wilderness, uh, from like 2007, so, uh, yeah. Can you send me a picture of him? The vehicle is registered to, uh, same last name as our target, but the, the, the first name is R&E bar. 
I died for the and now um, he comes back to our PR, and we were assuming this is his brother or relative. Alright, maybe uh, I'll just um, check his IP real quick and just say we're looking for vehicle that matches this description. The ICE officer moves in and catches the suspect's relative off guard as he returns to his vehicle. Far less, huh? Yes. So this is your brother's vehicle? Mm -hmm. All right. But the officer notices something strange about the documents. It's Tango. Tango. We got him uh, in custody. Oh, yeah. Just give me Just turn around. Put your hand by your back. With the suspect detained in the car park, the remaining ICE officers back at the house hurry to assist their colleagues. Yeah, same last name as our target. Every second counts, as the suspect could still pose a threat to the arresting officers. The arresting officer continues to search the suspect as backup finally arrives to assist him. A full body search is conducted to ensure the suspect has no concealed weapons that could pose a threat to the arresting officers or passing yeah, members of the yeah, public. Uh, this gentleman that we were talking about, he was looking a little strange towards the front of the house, as though seeing some vehicles that might not have been uh, belonging to the area. So he came back out, looked again, then he got back in the truck and he pulled away. See, the information we have from is the subject doesn't drive. He doesn't drive, he walks to work, or he takes public transportation. So this threw everything out of whack, but when we it comes back to a relative of his, which we believe is a brother. So we were trying to get the photo of the brother, but in the interim, when he pulled out of the driveway, I dispatched an officer to follow him. And in the interim, we were pulling photos of the brother and realized that the brother's photo didn't match this gentleman that supposedly owned the car and he is in fact the target that we were looking for. When you follow up on your lead, you see what happens. And if we didn't follow up on that, he would have been gone right then. So uh, I'm extremely pleased with the guys and the work that was being done on the other side, making all the phone calls and pulling up the IDs from the guys back at the office. So this was an all around team effort to get this guy because our information was good, but yet some of it was not on point. So it all wound up coming out and the arrest was you know, a great arrest that we were able to do. In Philadelphia, the Indian national reflects on his arrest and what it could mean for his future in the United States. They're releasing me for now. Oh, yes. I'm able to see my daughter. been too long in this country and I've never been arrested. I don't know these things, how they work. This is just very new to me. So let's see. I have to appear in front of the judge. And they're taking me to some place right now, I don't know, to put an ankle bracelet, something like that. I'm scared I didn't know what's gonna happen. All I knew is that I have to appear at the court for the hearing today. And I was brought in over here, so never went through that before. An immigration judge will ultimately make the final decision on this man's future status in the United States. But for now, he will be allowed to return to his daughter and the life he knows in Philadelphia.
In New Jersey, ICE Officer Ken reflects on a successful morning for his team. This last target, you saw a lot of uh, different factors come into play, but persistence was a key on, you know, our, my staff, myself, following up on the possibilities of all the people coming and going from the residents. And like I said, the intel we had was he, he didn't drive. And we couldn't tell if that was him, maybe a family member, but, you know, we pull him over. And lo and behold, he's using his brother's car with the brother's registration, but it was actually the target that was driving the vehicle. So that's very satisfying when you, you follow up on all the leads and, and the leads lead you to the target. That's when the people might know when someone might be looking for them. They'll use other people's vehicles that have status here in the United States. So it comes back to someone that has status and, and maybe not any criminality. So it is common. The Guatemalan wanted for DUI and domestic violence was removed from the country in February 2020. The Honduran convicted of sexual offenses in the United States was returned to Honduras. The Salvadoran man arrested in Newark for sexual offenses against a minor was deported from the United States in March 2020. The Polish man was repatriated to Poland. His current whereabouts are unknown. The Indian national was released back into the community pending removal proceedings. He subsequently absconded from the ATD program. His whereabouts were unknown until ICE officers encountered him again at Delaware County Prison, Pennsylvania, following his arrest on a number of serious felony charges. These criminal proceedings are still pending, and ICE has lodged a detainer on him for future removal from the country. The work of ICE continues.